Jumping at the bit last night and this morning to get in here in this studio and go live today. It is August 2nd, 2011. We're going to be live here for at least the next three hours. We knew that they were attempting to set up a super Congress, a council of 13, to bypass the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Congress, and fully uh, put us into the hands of the offshore global crime syndicate known as the New World Order. We know that Mitch McConnell had tried to just completely hand the power of the purse over to the president, bypassing Congress two weeks ago. He openly made those announcements, but uh, people recoiled. And the president said, I can just use the 14th Amendment that was used against the states post-Civil War during Reconstruction. And every constitutional scholar out there said, this is outrageous. This is the, this is the military dictatorship of, uh, of uh, Lincoln and Ulysses S. Grant. And so instead, they created a lawyer facade. But when you look at the details in plain view, it is outrageous. It is off the charts, and we're going to be breaking it down today. Pastor Chuck Baldwin, presidential candidate for the Constitution Party, of course, last round, is going to be joining us to get into a host of issues, including this and Romans 13, how Christians are taught to submit to the tyranny of government and how unbiblical that is. And even if you're not a Christian, the issue is, is the majority of Americans are Christians and are taught bow down and worship government. You know, if you're in Nazi Germany, lick the boots of Hitler, it's of the Lord. It couldn't be more unbiblical and uncommon sense. But getting back uh, to the super Congress, it passed last night in the House, and they said they've got the votes in the next few hours in the Senate. And it sets up six members of the House, six in the Senate. They're the only ones that get to vote. And then the president has a veto, so he's, he's the 13th member. Or it's like they're his disciples, and he's uh, the new Obama nation that we must bow down and worship. And, of course, this power will be passed on to the next uh, tyrant. They just get worse and worse because we're deeper uh, into this tyranny. And they've set the precedent to launch wars without congressional approval, carbon taxes without congressional approval, ATF putting new laws in that aren't even laws. Uh, it is, again, outrageous uh, what we're witnessing. Warrantless wiretapping, totally illegal. The Constitution completely burned to a crisp. The enemy dancing in its ashes. And they're having to openly get rid of the Constitution Bill of Rights because they've engineered a controlled depression. And they've got to ride the tiger now. They've got to ride this buck and bronco or this wild uh, bull. Uh, or they're all going to go to prison. And so it is a criminal class combined together with a bunch of moronic freshman House members, most of them, who don't know which end is up. And I saw an incredible editorial. In fact, I forgot to print it, guys. If you just type in New York Times says compares Tea Parties uh, to terrorists, they actually say the Tea Party terrorist almost destroyed America. But thank God uh, uh, sanity prevailed. Ladies and gentlemen, under this agreement, if it passes the Senate, on all issues, as Harry Reid and others have said, not just taxes, not just spending, not just cuts, which is basically government itself, that's the key, the heart of it, the power to tax, power to destroy, the power to give the favors to the insiders and cut off everybody else, as we've seen with the power plants and the, all the rest of it, uh, the uh, health care waivers. They say no filibusters. And no amendments, and now bills cannot originate from a single House member and then be looked at and scrutinized by others who then co-sponsor it and bring it to a vote. It kills the republic. It, did you hear what I just said? Because words can't describe this. It kills the legislative branch effectively and hands it over to a super Congress to a committee with the president with the veto power, and it gets worse. When they bring the legislation they've packaged out of the super committee, the 12-member council with the president is the 13th leader, Sauron. When the ring rights bring that to the House and Senate, they can vote it up or down. And then if the House or Senate doesn't vote on what they proposed, get this. Get this. Listen to me. I'll tell you when we come back from break. You, you can't make this stuff. Infowars.com. Bankers abolish Congress. And that's exactly what they've done if they are allowed to pass this bill in the Senate that's now passed the House. And if the criminal government that occupies this nation for the foreign offshore banks is able to carry this out. 
Now, I shot six emergency videos last night that are up at InfoWars.com. Aaron Dykes did a special InfoWars uh, breaking uh, news special report. They were up here till midnight uh, last night. I didn't even have to tell them to do it. They knew how important it was. Uh, and so they stayed up here till midnight to put that special report out. I almost never call other talk show hosts that I know and beg them to look at the information and cover it on their shows. And I appreciate some of those talk show hosts doing that. But I almost ran off the road yesterday uh, as I uh, was getting news alerts at, at red lights, uh, reading what was confirmed in the language uh, of the so-called debt ceiling uh, agreement. I knew that this had all been proposed. And I even knew that our guest yesterday had said that they had actually reviewed it all, that this was a executive coup. But by the time I got home last night, and spent the entire evening until one in the morning. So from about 6.30 until one in the morning, researching it, reading the text, reading mainline CBS News analysis, ABC, hoping that I was looking at this wrong. But also marveling that this is how republics die, not with a bang, but with a whimper. Remember three months ago, Ron Paul said, uh, well, they've launched a war in Libya, and they haven't gotten congressional approval, and Obama says he doesn't need it or want it. Uh, this is the last nail in the republic's coffin if we allow this to continue, because now the sky's the limit. And, and, and that's the issue. They Remember just five years ago, George W. Bush saying, we don't spy on Americans without warrants, I promise, in a press conference. And two years later, it came out, they're listening to everything without warrants. And now it's just, yeah, we're tracking everything, we're listening to everything. It's not legal, but we just do it. It's not legal for Obama to give insiders health care waivers, which give them unfair trade advantage and is complete discrimination, but they do it. It's not legal for the EPA to put carbon taxes in against select groups that aren't insiders and give waivers to insiders, but they do it. It's not legal in Chicago for the public schools to say you can't pack your child a lunch, quote, you're not trusted. They said we can't trust you. It's not legal when it's not even law in Oak Park, Michigan, to say we're going to put you in jail for 93 days and give you a $5,000 fine for a tomato box uh, in your yard. But they do it. It's not legal for the ATF to ship close to 30,000 guns into Mexico over the last two years that's killed five cops, three Border Patrol agents, and then perjured themselves to Congress saying they didn't do it, and then to be caught doing it and shipping them all over the U.S. to select gangs. And they don't get in trouble. So tyranny always grows slowly and incrementally, and then it starts to speed up to a gallop, and then a run, and now a mad, foaming at the mouth, 110% race. We are being overrun, and that's why they're grabbing private pension funds, public pension funds, stealing the veterans' death benefits, stealing the uh, uh, funds for their future care. They are taking everything, including the kitchen sink, and they're pulling boards out of the walls and the flooring up, and now they're pulling the superstructure down. I mean, it is like a million piranhas, and America is a big fat hog dropped in the middle of the Amazon, and a million piranhas are hitting us and hitting us hard. And, and I do not have words to describe the proof, the documentation, the nakedness of it. And a lot of people are sending me emails and, and seeing comments and getting calls. Where's Ron Paul? Where's Ron Paul? Well, he talked about the Super Congress being tyranny. He talked about it being bad in the last few weeks as they proposed it. Uh, but he did put out a statement last night saying this is very troubling. It neutralizes the rest of the House and Senate. Now we can't block tax increases or gun control. So people are saying, where's Ron Paul? Well, he, he was there last night, 75, almost 76, working. I saw his report come out at 10 o'clock at night. So, but again, Ron Paul's back because he worked till 10 o'clock at night or later. Uh, says, Where's Ron Paul? Why isn't he talking about this? He was talking about it. Go to his website. Just because he did, you didn't instantly see him on CNN. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, one of my pet peeves has become people going, why isn't Alex covering this or that when I've covered whatever subject it is 50 million times? All right. I'm a little angry. I'm going to try not to overheat here and blow up because I need to go over this information. Let me just read you the headlines here. Super Congress to target Second Amendment. Gun owners of America. 
and they've got the quotes from Harry Reid and ABC News, CBS, and I even found the video last night, openly saying this covers everything. We can cover, we can do everything. Here's Ron Paul. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson has an article on it. Ron Paul sounds alarm on disturbing super Congress. And then uh, disturbing is like the Titanic hitting the iceberg and saying it's disturbing. Uh, and then Ron Paul goes into saying it's extraordinary new powers, undemocratic, um, seizing control, fast track. We can pass taxes, gun control. We're going to go over all of that. Here's another one. Weekly standard. Fiscal conservatives barred from super committee. It's not a super committee. That's the words of Harry Reid. It is a it is a all powerful council of twelve with the thirteenth member with absolute veto power. That's El Presidente. Uh, here's another great article uh, that, that breaks it down. The debt crisis is a Trojan horse to cause the fall of America. Yeah, it's designed to bring us into receivership. Amid grumbling from both sides, Senate scheduled to vote on debt deal today. NPR. Morning Examiner. No good can come from Super Congress, and it breaks down the issues. But, but still, this is all mild responses to it. Mild. Let me succinctly break this down for you, and then I'll go to mainstream news saying it with the quotes so, so you understand, and I have the text of the agreement. It is a totally open-ended power grab, worse than the, quote, debt deal, leaving an open window per week of 800 plus billion a week that the private Federal Reserve could run up on America's credit card in October 3rd, 2008. 27 trillion, we haven't gotten numbers in a year, 27 trillion, over 70% of it going to foreign offshore banks and domestic media, your tax money. I mean, this is a payoff. This is a buy-off or a systematic corporate takeover of America. It's not coming like the Soviet Russians or Hitler or the Chai Coms. It's not coming with tanks and airborne troops coming down like Red Dawn. It's all done by oily criminals who have for decades taken over every position of power in the federal government and in the bureaucracies and in most of the states. And they... Under the presidential decision directives, under the John Warner Defense Authorization Act that Bush started and Obama cemented, they say, we don't need to hear from 50 governors. We've appointed 10 that speak for the states. We don't need to hear from your local rural people. We've set up a rural council under the Department of Defense and Homeland Security. This is a total martial law takeover incrementally. But now we're getting up to flashpoint. They've been building all this up, growing their tentacles, infiltrating everything, doing it all in plain view, so mostly unconscious people, bureaucrats, cops, military, general public, city councils. This is all done very calmly, very straight-faced. I mean, it's, a, it's almost like Harry Reid and Boehner and Obama came out and calmly said, uh, um, by the way, uh, the temperature today will be 102 uh, here in D.C., and uh, there's going to be a, a meeting down at the park later. We're going to be handing out some free popsicles and uh, talking about bicycle safety and... Uh, Oh, by the way, a giant 10-mile-wide spacecraft just landed a mile away, and there's green aliens running around. Now, uh, back to weather. I mean, th it's that crazy, but they just kind of, well, like you do something in church. You let something out real slow in church, make sure nobody's looking at you, and then act like it wasn't you. That's what they've done. And, and people, it, it blows me. We have all these experts on, all these economists, all these historians. And most of the time, as my staff's pointed this out and others, I know more than they do. I don't think of myself as that smart. But I guess I do spend 15, 16, 17, 18 hours a day and lose sleep because I'm so obsessed with reality, studying everything, so I can tie everything together. And it's just, but it, it, it's not even hard. They, they have set up something in 235 years that's never existed. Where six members of the House, six members of the Senate, and the President, with a veto power over it, Bills don't originate from members of the House anymore. Anybody can introduce a bill and then get co-sponsors and have it debated. And for six months, it's in committee and looked at from every angle. No, listen to me carefully. I can't even believe this is happening, even though I knew it was all coming. It, 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 the, the fact that it's done and, and, and very few people even get what they're seeing here. Listen to me. Twelve in the House, six in the House. Six in the Senate, one Obama, that's 13, Council of 13, six in the House, six in the Senate, and Obama, 13. Now listen to me carefully. 
Now, I'm going to read it from mainstream news to you. And they just say it nonchalantly, like it's, like it's some boring thing they've announced. Or, oh, good news, we won't go bankrupt now, we're not going to collapse. When it's the contrary. It's designed to bring us into this. They can't have the rest of the Congress having the power to vote and speak up and, and the power to introduce bills because they know the people are going to get more and more awake and angry. So you've got this 13-member board with the president sitting in it. Drum roll, please. You got this 13-member council, and they originate the bills now. And then they bring the bill to the full House and Senate for an up-down vote, which they, again, don't have. And it, now, now, now here's the kicker. If they don't shine on to the plan they're presented, then the council just does whatever it wants. It just says, and I'm going to read the text, then the council will apply the cuts and the taxes. So you do the plan we want, House and Senate, or we do whatever we want. I, I mean, did you hear that? This is a total dictatorship, a fusion of the emperor, Caesar, and an inner coterie of senators and House members. I mean, did you hear what I just said to you? We'll be right back. So a council of 13, an act of high treason, has been passed by the House of Representatives. We are reportedly hours away from the Senate passing the same thing. The House and Senate are not allowed to hand away their authority. But they are basically signing a treaty with their vote with six members of the House, six of the Senate, and the executive. A treasonous treaty. Could the House and Senate sign a treaty to let the UN run America? Well, they have people on television telling us that that's the case. And then international law trumps our law. And that the UN says we can go to war, so we can go to war, we don't need a Congress. That's what's happening. And it's called the overthrow of our political system. But they call it a committee or a super Congress. No, if they vote to create a committee that will then try to organize the different bills that are still voted on, and then that committee comes forward with a final bill, that's what a committee is. A committee is not six in the House, six in the Senate, where they originate the legislation. That's not how legislation is originated. This is a whole new form of government, a whoredom, a legion of doom, a legion of corruption. Twelve wicked, mafioso, ring wraith, craven, scumbag traitors. In fact, there's a headline right there. Super Congress debt ceiling. Negotiators aim to create new legislative body. That's the Huffington Post. In fact, let me just go through these. So, so, so this is happening right out in the face of everyone. I, 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 this is the equivalent of July 4th, but a bad July 4th. If it passes today, it's passed the House, August 2nd will be known as the date that a disgusting 13-member dictatorship was created. And the president has the veto power, so he's the dictator, and he has these 12 wicked generals. And because they sit there and say it in real boring terms and look down and fidget and... And, and talk about how it's a victory for America and we averted collapse. That's why they built it up. We're going to collapse if we don't get this agreement, this agreement. It made it all about debt and cuts and what are we going to cut. That's not what they were after. That was all a smokescreen. Hidden in 100% plain total view. A new form of government. With the leaders of the House and the Senate and the President. And saying, in fact, if you don't believe me... We just showed you the Huffington Post. And they're reporting it dryly. Oh, new legislative body. It's unconstitutional, but so what? President's a dictator. We love it. If we allow him to get away with it. You see, that's what dictators don't come out and say. I'm a dictator. Martial law. Ha. They say security. We're going to have more police out. Security. Military. Uh, I'm launching a security operation in Libya. I'm launching a security operation in Poland or Danzig or Austria. My name's, my name's Hitler. They don't come out and say, hey, we're crooks, we're taking over. They come out and say, well, we've got a very dry, convoluted, and both sides compromised, and both sides aren't happy, but this will avert a collapse, and we're going to work on it now, and the cuts aren't even real, and it, it's all, that, that part's all a scam. We're going to get into that.
Kerry Reed and all of them are publicly, I'm going to read their quotes, licking their chops, saying we can cover everything, gun control, borders, debt, banker bailouts. Oh, they're getting ready for the next looting. The, the, the original looting's ongoing, but even more. Carbon taxes. Hey, ATF? Why do you think Obama did something no president's ever done and said, well, I don't need a law. I'll just order the ATF to put new laws and new regulations in over gun dealers and start harassing gun owners. They're just doing it. I've never seen anything near this magnitude. Here's CBS News. Last night, right after it passes, a summary of the debt ceiling. And I'll show folks a document cam shot of this. We're watching on PrisonPlanet.tv. A summary of the debt ceiling compromise. And then it goes on to say 269, 161, 174 traitors, Republicans, and 94, 95 Democrats. And it goes on to dryly in the bottom of the article say, the agreement creates a 12-person House and Senate special committee. Oh, it's very special. To identify further spending cuts. The committee must complete its work by Thanksgiving, November 23rd. Oh, uh, really, it actually continues after that. And Congress must hold an up or down vote on committee recommendations. Oh, it's a recommendation, but you must vote it up or down. But wait, it gets worse. The committee could overhaul the tax code, which they're announcing they're going to increase taxes, or find savings and benefit programs like Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Savings means cuts. Congress could not modify the committee's recommendation. Oh, you can't modify my recommendation. It's like Don Corleone. Your signature, your brains will be on the contract. Continuing. Now, here's the key. Now, listen to this carefully. This is CBS News. Listen to the magnitude of this. Should the special committee deadlock or should Congress reject the committee's recommendations? The automatic across-the-board spending cuts of at least $1.2 would go into effect. But the committee... If you read the language, decides the cut. So you do what we say or we do what we want. Period. We're dictators.